Hey everyone, Simon here with a quick video um, on the compatibility of a famous couple, uh, particularly because there is a show about them now on Hulu called uh, Pam and Tommy Lee, something like that. And it's about the relationship between Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. Um, kind of, you know, a scandalous, big relationship in the 90s with porno tape and all that stuff. Um, and so, of course, when I see stuff like that, I treat this as a documentary or as a um, case study, right? So immediately we pulled uh, the chart for Pamela and Tommy Lee. And I'm um, going to walk you through what their cosmic compatibility says. Now, I'm on the Cosmic Insights app website. This is also available on the phone. <clears throat> and this is a... Uh, a site that we programmed our compatibility protocol. It doesn't have everything. And in fact, I'm gonna bring out some of the points that it doesn't have uh, today, but um, it's got enough. So let's dive right in. We're gonna do, we're gonna look at their Vedic astrology compatibility. And one of the oldest methods is called Ashtakuta. And according to the Ashtakuta, it's 19 and a half points out of 36. Anything above 18 is actually pretty good. So from that point, uh, it looks okay. Now, this measurement uh, is not the same as you'll get on your phone because this summarizes their uh, the moon and their ascendant uh, measurements, kind of a technical thing, but um, it, it kind of gives you the average. So, so far, it looks okay, right? And they did actually have a relationship. But let's dive into the details, right? So we're going to click on modern methods. And when you click on modern, met modern methods, what you get is a much more nuanced picture. And uh, so let's take a look here. So right off the top, you will see that uh, the, in the relationship appears to be extremely poor. Okay, but why? Why is that the case? So we start, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, actually six total indicators. And this final box gives you the final result, all right, with a score associated with it. So let's dive right in. So we start with a core connection. Core connection is how you get along on a, your personalities, right, on an emotional level, how you can talk to each other and so forth. And this says very bad, minus 9.5 out of 30. In fact, it is a deal breaker. And it says your core connection score is very low, which means that once the initial glow of your relationship is gone and you have a chance to see yourselves in the light of reality, you will probably not like what you see. Whatever other strengths your relationship possesses, it will be hard to take advantage of them without the solid mutual understanding shown by a strong core connection. And this is the key, mutual understanding. So that's not there in this uh, relationship. Now, can people still have a good, successful marriage in spite of a bad core connection? It's possible, but everything else has to be good, right? So not, no one of these things is by itself the complete deal breaker, even though this is pretty darn close. So you have minus 9.5, which means there's always going to be bickering. There's always going to be misunderstanding. Uh, from an astrological standpoint, you can look into it. The suns are square. The moons are 6, 8 to each other or called in conjunct. That's not really an aspect. The venuses are bad. The ascendants are okay. Uh, and the rule of the ascendants, not great. So overall, not a great score. So why were they so passionate and in love with each other? Well, let's keep going. Soulmate indicators. Now, soulmate indicators are connections that show like a twin flame, uh, uh, a soul affinity that's kind of a positive. It's a positive thing. It's different from karmic glue which is whether you like it or not, you're drawn to each other, right? Soulmate indicator is just that. It shows, in fact, uh, let's see what it says. Compiling factors measured by modern psychologists like Jung and others 
as well as ancient astrologers, your soulmate indicators reveal a psychological affinity that is different from your core connection. This applies to romantic couples as well as friends and family. Core connection operates at all times and is evident from the beginning, but soulmate indicators add a depth of affinity that's hard to judge. It's that kind of, you know, oh, you guys look so different. He's seven feet tall. She's five feet tall. Uh, you know, he's from this country. She's from that. What do you guys have in common? If there's a soulmate affinity, it doesn't matter what, you know, you look like or where you're from. Uh, but anyhow, um, that's also low, right? So we don't have a soul connection either. So what's going on here? Let's keep going. Hidden strengths and weaknesses. Ah, here we have a, uh, a hidden source of support. Um, this score assesses Jupiter's and Saturn's effect in the relationship. So this means they're generally, genuinely going to try to help each other um, with their career, with their appearance. They have good intentions toward, towards each other. So this is a good basis for a friendship. This is a good basis for you kind of want the other person to succeed. You want them to do well in life. Um, so that's great. They have this. Is this enough to prop up a relationship? No, right? This is enough for, hey, you need to go to rehab and I'm going to do what I can to help you get better. Or, hey, you know, you want this job? I'm going to go talk to your boss. I'm going to help you in whatever way I can, right? You want to help the other person, but this isn't necessarily about a deep love connection per se, even though, um, the sweet vibes are definitely there, uh, 16 and a half, with a lot of mutual Jupiter aspects. Okay, so that's good. That, that sheds some light on why they like and want to help each other, have a kind of friendliness. Next, karmic glue. Now, there is some stickiness here, definitely some karmic glue going on. And I think this is a good part of the reason for them being together. Um, some stickiness means that there are definitely some strong karmic aspects. And even though it's the score isn't 70, um, when, when a score is that strong, like 70, you don't want that. That means whether you want to or not, you can't split up. Like it's hard to get unstuck, right? So in this case, there's definitely stickiness. Something is attracting them. The DNA of his ancestors and DNA, or they wanted to get together, right? It's a sexual connection, it's a, but it's more than that. It's a karmic connection. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. Who am I to you? This measures um, how each person helps the other in the world. And again, it's not good. Um, uh, what if you have great compatibility, but you're not really attracted to a person for marriage? How, what, how can we tell if a relationship is friendship, dating, marriage, etc.? What are the houses in the horoscope that are lit up? So for this relationship, right away, you see the fifth house. Fifth house is the house of fun, sex, partying, having, but also children, right? The play center, fun and games, sport, adventure, creativity, all that good stuff. But also the sixth house. This is actually not... Uh, that desirable unless you're helping each other with work then the second house the 12th house of self-indulgence uh you know getting on a boat and sailing uh richard burton and elizabeth taylor have a lot of this like wanting to leave the world to you know to get away from it all so um not a great score here because it's a lot of negative houses are emphasized along with the positive fifth house so who am I to you is also kind of how the, the world sees you. They're going to see you as a very playful fifth house couple, but also one that's probably self-indulgent. Something about, let's see, Tommy brings emphasis to family matters, finances, and food in this relationship. Uh, you might find yourselves enjoying fine conversations over a good meal. And if this is a romantic, talk about talking about future family. So cooking together, that kind of stuff. Anyway. Um, that's who am I to you. And let's then let's keep going. Uh, danger breakup. Ah, there is a deal breaker he here. 
a rough weather ahead. There is potential for some storms on the horizon, which may lead to arguments and possible breakups. Now, here's the thing. This is the second deal breaker in this relationship. If the first one got us to the edge, this one tips us over. No, no doubt. The, pro the reason is um, you want more good things. You want relationships to be more easy than they are hard, right? Every relationship is going to have difficulties. But if there are two deal breakers and no deal makers, it's such a steep mountain to climb that why do it? Now, again, people have free will, right? I've seen charts worse than these. And people got together. And of course, they had a terrible split. But some people stayed together for a long time. In fact, there's a chart worse than this, but with stronger karmic glue to the point where the people couldn't separate. And they were constantly fighting, bickering, throwing glass at each other, all that stuff. And they stayed together many, many years. So on, on one front, it's a successful relationship. But is it really? if you're fighting all the time. So this is the second deal breaker. That's bad news. Rough weather ahead. Now this says, if your overall compatibility is strong, you can weather these storms. The best way to deal with this energy is to give each other space to be yourselves. Cultivate independent hobbies. Give each other the freedom to be who you are without trying to make the other into something you would like your partner to be agree to disagree follow these rules and the storms will pass well easier said than done if the core compatibility the core connection were better yeah maybe you can pull that off but that's another deal breaker so here we have a pretty easy like if this couple came to you and you're you know you've got your crystal ball or you're doing whatever you're doing astrology or tarot and you just pulled it pull them up you're going to say, look, you guys are going to do what you're going to do, but this isn't going to last in terms of a marriage, successful marriage. So just kind of be playful with it and assume that it isn't, you know, get prenup or whatever you have to do. Or why even get married? But anyway, sometimes you can't people tell people that. So there's definitely a, uh, a there are breakup combinations here. OK, I won't go through what all the breakup combinations are. I don't want to bore you with that. And we get to the final result. Extremely poor, minus 3.75, a difficult match. This is not likely to work out as a long term personal relationship unless you have at least one deal maker. That's because you lack the fundamental compatibility necessary to spark long term romance. All right. Even for other relationships, if this is a family member, a co-worker, a friend, there's not much common ground here to make friendship or partnership work. Um, so to give each other plenty of space, you know, if this is family, that's, that's the solution. Now you're going to ask, well, this is terrible. How is it that they have two kids together? You know, they were happy and in love for a portion of it. For that, we're going to go into the charts. All right, so follow me there. It's not a long trip. There we are. Here is the chart of Pamela. And uh, I pulled up the chart of Tommy Lee. Now, we do not have a precise birth time for him. And I apologize, I'm using the North Indian charts. But it's simply to illustrate a very uh, basic point that actually will probably be more easily illustrated with the South Indian chart. Uh, but I, this is what I use. So just follow me here. I think you'll be able to see it. In a previous video on soulmate combinations, how to know he's the one or she's the one, I told you about a combo where you look at the woman's Mars, which is what her idea of masculinity is. When the man's son is on the woman's Mars. She sees that man as her ideal masculine. Like, that's it. That's the man I want. And that is what we have here. This is a chart of Tommy Lee. 
I think his ascendant is Capricorn, but what I've done is I flipped the chart so his ascendant is the same as her ascendant because it's easier to see these combinations. And as you can see, his son in Virgo is exact is it in the same sign. It's not exactly on her Mars, but there it is, right? That is a one of those soulmate combinations. I told you about five soulmate combos in a previous video. There it is. Now, this is not programmed into the Cosmic Compatibility app. So what, um, what is said there is still true, right? This is a terrible compatibility. It's not good compatibility, but you can see why there was the attraction, all right? Now, in his chart, he has a Venus-Neptune combination. We're going to talk about this in our uh, Divine Love class. Um, guys, I hope you can join us for this. You're going to learn all of these techniques and how to make it simple into an elegant interpretation for yourself or the client. And not only to judge compatibility, but to see what are the issues and the baggage that people are bringing into the relationship. So for Tommy Lee with the Venus-Neptune combination, um, our friend Charlotte Benson calls this the Madonna whore complex. Madonna here doesn't refer to the entertainer, it refers to the mother of Christ, meaning the woman who is of utmost virtue, the virgin. So when Venus and Neptune are together in the same sign, you will be attracted to a partner who at the same time represents purity and pure love, as well as carnality and sex in the same package. And that's what you're looking for. So for Tommy, he wanted someone who was an angel on the outside and a devil on the inside, right? Uh, or an angel and a devil at the same time. That is the Venus-Neptune combination. And it's uh, reinforced by being in... Uh, Libra, which makes Venus particularly strong. And it's further influenced by Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn, which means this is a focal, focal combination for his chart. Okay. Uh, again, we're going to get into what each of these combos mean. Like this Saturn K2 and his ascendant, I think that's his ascendant Capricorn. It really tells you a lot about the character of the person. Um, but this combo is sort of the projection that he brings into every relationship. He wants his partner to be a saint and a sinner, to be utterly physically beautiful, but also spiritually enlightened. Kind of a, a, a trip to lay on any one person, right? Um, so, and, and there's more to it than this, but I'm going to leave it, uh, you know, at that here. So that's the, the preconceived notion he's coming into, uh, into this world with. Uh, she's coming into it uh, with uh, other notions, um, a bit like a deer in the headlights. Uh, she has Mriga rising, which is the deer, and Mriga people tend to get stopped. I talked about this in my video on Mriga Shiras, um, or Mriga Shira, or Mriga Shirsham, Shirsha, rather. Um, there are different ways to say the word head in Sanskrit. You can say it shidaha or shirsham, and it just means head. So mriga shira is the head of the deer. She has that as her ascendant. And I talked about how this can be a problem for being stalked, particularly because Saturn's aspect is also on it. So um, I, that has nothing to do with this relationship, although come to think of it, he did kind of stalk her in the beginning, uh, according to, to the show. Um, he, you know, he followed her to Cancun and so forth to meet her there. Anyway, why do we do these charts? Not because um, we only do them so we can learn from this, right? And these are real world examples. These are real lives that have been lived. And, um, and we certainly, you know, um, wish him the best. And, um, but back to the point, if 
Now, every guy out there who has their son in Virgo is like, oh, so I'm Pamela Anderson's ideal man? Well, yes, maybe potentially, especially if your son is even closer to her Mars. So you can reverse engineer this. Take those five methods I taught you in that other video, the five techniques, and you can reverse engineer them to find a partner who is born in a particular date or, you know, uh, or week, even month, potentially. Because um, for the man, it's where his Venus sits. Now, notice that Pam does not have her son on his Venus. So she doesn't activate this directly, although her son, uh, her son, which is here, does try in this position, but that's much weaker. So there's an element that she brings out in him. Uh, but... Um, it's not as strong as his son being on her Mars. So that's an additional little soulmate combo. I'll end with this. Uh, I'm gonna make a video about how to marry a millionaire or how to become a millionaire by marrying or being with someone. And one of the ways is when your yogi point and their yogi point and their yogis combine. Notice the degrees of his Mercury, 23 Virgo. If I'm gonna take away his chart here, just keep that in mind. Look at the degrees of her yogi point, 23 degrees Virgo. His Mercury sits exactly on her yogi point as his yogi. So this means this is one way to see that this couple will actually profit from each other. There will be um, mutual uh, they will advance each other financially. Uh, probably she advanced him more than, than he, but um, uh, when the yogi and the yogi point is involved with this degree of exactitude, there is some of that. Now, the yogi point is also the point where your desires are fulfilled. So there is, it, it can go beyond money. Uh, but we'll look at that in, uh, in another video. All right, I hope this was useful to you guys. Uh, just a quick look at compatibility, how to use the Cosmic Insights app. There's a, you can get this, use my code to save 20% on it. If you don't have it, code Simon. And uh, do come join us for our live class. Um, details are below and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, thank you everyone. Namaste.